Right. Armed. Start number one. Yeah, 185 heavy, clear for takeoff, runway 2 to right, winds 230 at 15. Heavy, 185 heavy, is rolling. At 135, we'll 2 to right, there'll be a slight delay because of the heavy jet. 135. Now it was the 701 uh, Minneapolis Tower, you're cleared in the position and you're cleared for takeoff on runway 29 left, it went to 330 at 10, up on 701. Okay. before the uh, mass amount of jets first came, and as a matter of fact, our first 707 was flying over when we moved in. But the noise interferes with light. It interferes with light. In the summertime, you're trying to have a cookout. Every five minutes during the holiday, the plane's coming. You can't hear what the, what the neighbors are saying. Uh, pretty much the same, same as last time. If I hear them coming, I stop talking immediately because it just doesn't do me any good. Once you get used to it, you don't really hear it that much. Like when we first moved here, it was real noisy. I didn't want to stay out here because it, it was like I was afraid by going deaf by the noise. I'd like to get out of this neighborhood. I would. If they bring me in the SP, I'm getting out. Right on the ocean, we're right near public transportation. It's a it's a good community. There, and we have a, a good church, and uh, it you know you just have to take the bad with the good. At first, I didn't quite know what to do, but clearly the problem was coming from the airport, and that was the source to attack. Being a pilot with several thousand hours of flight experience, I analyzed what could be done from a procedural viewpoint to alleviate the problem. And I brought these proposals to the Massachusetts Port Authority and to the FAA. Much to my surprise, the FAA didn't want to do anything. This caused me to think about how I could force them to move. And I decided the approach to take would be to make it more difficult to continue the present pattern than to change it. So I began a program of every time I was annoyed by the airplanes, I called up the operations office at Massport, and I just complained and complained and complained. Finally, after many months of this, the FAA instituted a change in procedures. And the change was as follows. Departures on runway nine, whenever permissible, would make a right-hand turn, taking them away from this area. This has almost totally eliminated the problem of departure noise from runway 9 at Logan Airport. The U.S. has more than 450 major airports, serving an American fleet of nearly 2,200 large jets and thousands of other aircraft. But environmental concern about the noise problem clouds the future of the industry. New airport construction and expansion of existing airports both have been thrilled. Lawsuits by people claiming the value of their property is diminished by noise presents a financial burden for many airport operators.
Presently, the Port of Seattle has approximately 200 lawsuits against it because of noise impact problems. It is lawsuits such as these, both against SeaTac and other airports, that threaten the growth of the airline industry in the United States today. Yet, we can do something about the noise. We are doing something about it. With the cooperation of the FAA and the airline industry, the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport is a recognized leader in noise abatement action. It has adopted 15 different sound suppression measures, including a restriction on scheduled flights at night. MASAC, the Sound Abatement Council of Minneapolis-St. Paul, brings together all the interests involved in an airport noise reduction program. We have both the makers of the noise and receivers of aircraft noise sitting down at the table and trying to work together to alleviate aircraft noise. There I had 17 night flights over my house last night, starting at 10.30 to 5.41 this morning. Now all this is evening. all night. Well, it's 10.35, 10.40, 10.45, 11, 11.02. 11, 11.05, 11.07, 11.12, 11.25, 11.50, 12.25, 12.55, 1 o'clock, 1.11, 1.31, 5.30, and 5.41. So you can see how it's up all night. This has been going on for well over a month. I think something should be made clear that any charter flights can come in here any time at night. And I think that a lot of people have been led to believe there's a curfew. There's no curfew on those. Is that correct, Cliff? SeaTac, the Seattle Tacoma Airport, opened for business in 1948. It was built in an open area on farmlands and marshes. Now thousands of people are living around SeaTac, many of them directly under the approaches to the runways. But the airport and the community have joined in a plan that may eventually free SeaTac from its necklace of noise aggravated neighbors. We developed a series of programs that address the noise problem at SeaTac. These programs range from outright acquisition, the areas in red, which composes about 1,000 homes, to a purchase guarantee program, which allows a current resident to sell his house in the brown areas. And the blue areas are a noise insulation program proposed to allow a homeowner to participate in the acoustic insulation of his own residence. 7,000 homes, 20,000 people will get some relief from aviation noise when the Seattle-Tacoma plan is fully realized. By earlier standards, the big 747 is a quiet plane. Now, several airlines are modifying their 747 engines to rid them of these sucker doors that once were thought to be essential during high power operation, but make a lot of noise. A new design of the engine air intake allows the doors to be removed and increases fuel efficiency. The addition of sound suppression material also helps contain engine noise. This attacks jet roar at its source, the airplane engine. Flight procedures for takeoff and climb, letdown and landing, can dramatically dampen jet roar in communities near an air center. Here up. There's only two ways, really, that you get rid of the takeoff noise, and that's uh, put as much distance between yourself and the listener or the people on the ground as possible. And we do that with the max performance climb on the initial part of the takeoff. And then when we're out over the area where people live, we reduce the noise by the big thrust cutback or reduction in the EPR setting. And we'll climb at the reduced thrust setting to 3,000 feet. And uh, now we've reached an altitude where noise isn't, is no longer the problem that it was. And we'll slowly apply climb thrust and accelerate to our en route uh, climb speed and we're on our way.
climb power different from maximum takeoff power? I would say it's about half the noise. I uh, think we're getting a little carried away with this whole uh, reduction of power theme. But I think that we have to realize that somewhere along the line, you're jeopardizing safety. Some pilots doubt the Northwest Airlines climb profile is the best noise abatement and, uh, procedure. Not implying that the other procedures aren't uh, very safe. But Northwest the, itself has no such doubts. The Northwest procedure adds some additional safety margin too. And uh, most important, if an engine should fail or if you run into a wind shear problem or a problem like that, we have a great deal of excess thrust. Yeah, the early cleanup, of course, the reduction uh, in, in the drag uh, saves, saves Northwest Airlines about a million and a quarter dollars a year. And uh, on our fuel bill, we save about four and a half million gallons of fuel. That's a lot of fuel. Transworld 65, heavy clear for takeoff, runway 2 right. Well, here at Logan, we're situated so close to the surrounding communities that the noise impact to the, the people is very much a complaining uh, situation, and it, it makes us in air traffic control do peculiar things. To reduce noise on the ground during hours of peak traffic at Boston Airport, tower operators limit the number of aircraft taxiing for takeoff. The planes are held at their terminal gate or at some other point until each can move quickly to the runway threshold and depart. Departure control on 127.2. Wind and weather permitting, departing flights also are turned after takeoff over the waters of Boston Harbor. And after takeoff, left turn heading 210 for noise abatement. The Massachusetts Port Authority is grappling with a half dozen other ideas for aviation noise abatement. We are recognizing that Logan is one of the most impacted airports in the United States by noise and that we believe that it is our responsibility to do something about it within, to the maximum extent possible, dealing with the scheduling of the airline, not requiring them to make the uneconomic move. The airlines will have to reschedule their flights, cut out schedules going into that airport, and subsequently and consequently cost many jobs. Massport must take some action at today's board meeting on the fleet noise rule that rule requires that 50% of the aircraft landing or taking off at Logan Airport must be certificated as Part 36 aircraft under the federal noise standards. In addition to the noise abatement scheduling rule, I'm asking for a new regulation on preferential runway use at Logan. The fleet noise rule, I think, is too open. Too many loose ends. Once again, we're letting the airlines slap our hands. They're bowing to them. Cargo flights aren't covered in there. And cargo flights produce a heck of a lot of noise in the communities at night. The preferential runway system is very, very weak. The pilot decides to uh, use a particular runway other than 1533, and we can slap his hand and say, you're a naughty boy, don't do it again. They have not given us one indication they want to work with us. And we've really tried as an authority. Why should I change my mind for them now? I don't know how to vote, to be honest with you. The policy that was adopted um, represents uh, a lot of dialogue, a lot of work by the governor's office, the mayor's office, the Port Authority, and the communities to try to get a policy out of, out of the Port Authority. Um, it's far from what we asked for. There are several real deficiencies in it yet, and yet it is a beginning, and we're willing to work uh, over the next few months to see that it works. Some communities, some airports, some airlines, and growing numbers of people have joined the attack on noise. The attack against engines that make too much noise, against airport and airplane operations that make too much noise, against poor land use and faulty construction practices around air centers. Each airport, each noise problem is different. The Environmental Protection Agency has developed a plan which helps airports and their neighbors work out ideas for noise abatement that work for them. We can do something about the noise. We are doing something about it. Yet, the job has barely begun. <laughs>